We've built a bunch of cars at VATV, and there is a common thread among almost all of them. And, and when you talk to the, the, the customer, you talk to the person you're gonna build a car for, they wanna talk about the stance, the engine, and the fact that it has to have vintage air. And just about everything we've done has vintage air, you know? And it's either the front runner system on the front of the engine for the, the belt assembly, or it's the actual air conditioning. So, you know, it's amazing to me that you guys have become so integral as part of a cool car build. Well, you know, and, and Kevin, you're a driver like the mm -hmm. rest of us. The cars you build, you drive. And I think our customers have become more drivers. They want to enjoy their cars. I mean, they're using them for daily drivers. They're using them for, for pro touring events. Mm -hmm. And we're hot rodders, too, and we're drivers. And I think air conditioning used to be looked at as an upgrade or something that maybe the high-end cars had. And if you're going to drive and enjoy your car in four seasons, you want a good heating AC system in your car so that you can enjoy it in all weather, whether it's the cool evenings, cool mornings, or, you know, hot summer afternoons. So I think it has become more of a, less of an option and more of a, a standard equipment on most of the builds that, that most hot riders are doing anymore. Well, what I think is cool, too, is factory air conditioning was something that you take off. Mm -hmm. uh, but your products, I think the front runner is just an unbelievable home run because it, it solves a problem air conditioning or not of just getting a serpentine yeah. set up but then all of the units and the compressors and everything are much smaller and they're lighter and they're things that you don't worry about sacrificing much weight on there. Right. The two things that were the biggest biggest downers to the old factory air was number one that the performance was not all that good on them. Even the best factory air of the 60s you know right now we're looking that's 50 year old technology. <laughs> and they out. were big, they were heavy and they were horsepower parasites. I mean, mm -hmm. they stole, running one of those old compressors was a 10 to 15 horsepower ceiling really? type of thing. It really era. was. Yeah, the yeah. old York compressors. A6. It was running a lawnmower engine in a lot of ways. <laughs> and the new compressors that we use in our front runner drives and just the standard sanded compressors, that's a three to five horsepower compressor at, at maximum capacity. Mm -hmm. So you're talking three to five horsepower. That's such a little draw that any high performance engine can handle that mm -hmm. now. And you're not going to see that loss of performance. So the other thing is the systems now are much more compact. In addition to being more compact, the performance is better on them. So it's really a win situation across the board. We try to make it as small as it can be and yet re really get good performance out of it. The performance that everybody expects out of their late model vehicle, now they can get in, in the early cars as well. Well, because they're using that same technology. Exactly, guess, right? exactly. It's okay. OEM technology. And, and the Gen 4 systems that we're doing now, we, and I'm sure you know, we did the climate control system for the Ford GT supercar. And a lot of the same technology that we used in the Ford GT, we're now using in our aftermarket Gen 4 systems. So you're getting technologies that the OEM used in your aftermarket systems. You know what I think would be so scary about that is Ford GT, you know, it's a tremendous honor for you guys to be as part of that car, but here's a car that is very, very expensive, has to have a tremendous level of quality, and it's not gonna get used every day. Yep, And that's exactly. what kills stuff. It's exactly right, <laughs> I mean, and, and that's it. The more a car sits, that's the worst thing you can do. Right. So when we were designing these components, we keep that in mind. Again, we're hot rodders too. We have old cars, we drive our old cars, do tours every year with them, and you know, that's where we spend so much time together on the road. And you learn what works and what doesn't work. And, and we try to translate all of that into our product line. Well, one of the questions I get a lot is, um, people have a muscle car and they want the air conditioning upgrade, but they don't necessarily want a different type of controller. They like the stock dash look. Yep. And I, I look over here at this bench and I see a bunch of, uh, of controllers. Tell me what we're looking at here. What we're looking at here, we actually designed and patented this product and it's called a cable converter. And what this cable converter will do for you is it bolts into the same location as your stock cables used to in a cable operated system. And it takes that cable operation and converts it to electronic operation. Nice. And it really allows us a lot of flexibility in retaining the look of your factory control panel in your vehicle mm -hmm. and yet operating a fully electronic system. Huh. The systems are microprocessor operated, so after you do the installation, you calibrate oh, the cable converter low and high, and the system actually learns the minimums and maximum oh, of nice. each individual control panel. So you get full travel of all the doors and full operation of all the system functions. Oh, that is sweet. That is sweet on so many levels because I, I'm a lucky guy in the shop. I'm, I'm a bigger guy, right? So I'm not the one that gets shoved under the dashboard, right? Kelly and Nick and some other guys do. And I'll tell you, it, it's like the shop gets prepared for the week 
of doing the dash because you've got to go through and rebuild all the cables, replace them, grease them, lubricate them, find all the little push down lock clips that got lost, you know, the, restore the rusty controllers. And now you attach this and you plug it in. Yep, you attach this. It's a direct plug in, just basically has one 10 pin plug in that goes into the microprocessor. Huh. That's all there is to it. Now, no individual wiring. Okay, so these, the cable converters, um, I see that's for GTO, right? Mm -hmm. 64, 67. Are you coming up with, um, I mean, how much of this is specific to the GTO piece? Is it these brackets or tell It's me just about basically that. the cable converter is a pretty universal part. You see, we've got a Mustang controller here using those same cable converters on a Mustang controller. Okay. Tri 5 Chevrolet. Okay. The early Chevelles, the same thing. We use the same cable converter pot on any of the early cable operated systems. Okay. So, yeah. So, what somebody gets is the bracket to attach the cable converter to their controller. Yep, and any, any ancillary parts, like on the GTO, we use a little adapter bracket to change that operation into a more smooth operation than okay. Pontiac had with a plastic piece originally. But we make it a regular controls kit that's unique to each control panel, but it still uses that same patented cable converter pot. Right. And where I was going with that is, it's not like you just sell a converter and rely on the end user to make it fit. No. No, it's, it's, each pot is, is unique to that control, or so each controls kit is unique for that particular control panel. And how extensive is the line of availability for those? Right now we have Gen 4 availability for the 64 to 70 Mustangs, 64 to 72 Chevelles, um, 58 to 62 Corvettes, 68 to 76 Corvettes. Um, we just finished the 58 to 62 Corvette now, uh, 62 to 72 Chevy Novas, and as well now, we're just about to release the kits for the 67 to 72 Chevy pickups, all of them in the Gen 4 technology. Now, some of the, the later model cars, like the Chevelles, that had vacuum-operated controls rather than the cables, what we do is we actually make a new control panel that bolts into the stock location and uh -huh. has a real OEM look to it. Sure, right. Some of the later model Camaros, the, we have full Camaro coverage as well, 67 right up to 78. And the early Camaros used the cable converter pots, whereas the later model Camaros that were vacuum operated, we have a new control panel that's included with the kit. Nice, very cool. Uh, I'm excited, because that'll, that'll make uh, our life easier, make the car build go faster. And then uh, the end result is always awesome, and it'll flip the air on. Yeah, and it gives your customers a lot of options. You know, if they yeah, want right. to retain their factory controls, retain that factory look, they can. And the other thing that's really great about this system is if they decide they want to upgrade to some kind of aluminum control, if they're customizing the dash mm -hmm. or building some type of contemporary interior, they can go with an F with some of the aluminum controls that we mm -hmm. produce. And again, it's a direct bolt-in and a direct plug-in. So they've got a lot of options. Same system. Yeah, we've known for a long time you've got a variety of different controllers mm -hmm. already. Yep, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it gives the customers a lot of options when they're building their cars. Just like each car you build is a little bit unique, yep. every customer is that way, so we try to give them a lot of options. Very nice, man. Well, we could stay in here all day, but unfortunately, uh, I'll probably collapse. Appreciate the visit always, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Good man. to see you. Excellent info. Great.